My name is Anisha. I'm from Nepal. Uh, talking about Nepal Tiger Project, um, it was such a coincidence because I didn't intend it. Like I didn't know anything about it, but when I was just searching uh, an internet, and then I found Nepal Tiger Project Plus because I had been student of forestry and had been involved in lots of projects with conservation awareness and stuff so I wanted to get involved in more research and more into field-based work so I came across Nepal Tiger Project and John Brooks um, whom I contacted and I wrote like yeah because I wanted to be in those research and it's so hard for a woman to get involved what I faced is like the women are not encouraged to go to the field works and again with the wildlife so but I was more interested into getting more into communities those areas that I've not gone before and and help however I can because plus it was a great learning for me to explore one of those part of my country that I've never been with the Sherpa communities and I wanted to know more about culture and the biodiversity point of view and everything so everything turned out good and John wrote to me and uh, we we met like a few months I think it was I forgot but it was a nice met up and then we got along very good and we went to the trip uh, to Okaldunga, it's like the eastern foothills of Nepal and um, that was like a life-changing one of the life-changing experiences for me of how how hard the life there in the mountains and how rich the biodiversity there is that has been one of the greatest time that that i spent in one of the field works uh, with john brooks and i learned i had a great time learning about the different way of monitoring them using camera traps and pog marks and footprints uh, learning about the human wildlife conflicts that they have with leopards and probably tigers being a woman and with a passion on wildlife how hard it's it is to convince other people around you that you really want to follow your dreams and and uh, fulfill them but still the society would be judging you with whom you're going what kind of company you're with is it there's all men or there are any females there how is the situation and uh, what are you going to do everything it was it was kind of ridiculous for me because it should be more about what i want to do and what path i'm following not like with whom i'm going and is there a female there or not because many of my friends wouldn't want to do field works and that's like their choice they would some would want but they wouldn't get permission from their parents because we're still in the, in the society where um uh, girls are always like under the family like parents nurture so they wouldn't we have to ask and get permission for everything and that's fair enough for many things but still to to achieve dreams and to do things that you really want to do sometimes those things become like hindrances and uh, many women who could who would have lots of potential like has have to suppress them because they're not allowed to and that's how they're we are raised but having these conflicts with my mind because I was like raised in kind of open-minded but still a little bit of those thoughts that would sting me but I wouldn't I would just rebel I would be like nope I would want to go but but again I have to use how it worked with my family so I lied them with them telling yeah there are the women's going on the trip too and um, and also that I said like I trust John Brooks more than even Nepali guys that I would be going with I don't know just I just had this intuition feeling that he would be a great person I know <laughs> and yes yeah, so as per I expected that was like one of the best experiences of fieldworks I had and lots of motivation and encouragement and support and I, I would say like John Brooks is one of the very inspirational character for me for like sewing what 
I can be like how most of the time they would say like how a person like goldsmith would know the value of gold because he works on it and he knows what it can turn to not the gold would know about it so similar thing with me would be like I didn't know what I could do because that's how my my society has made me but but when John encouraged me like said like you gotta explore yourself this is so many things you can do and I think from that moment, I would say I've changed a lot. And it is also to do with traveling and meeting these great people with great minds. And uh, uh, being in the field is not as like good and fancy as it may sound with the pictures people see afterwards. But we have really hard work to do. Like that was my first time going on that level, like three, almost 3,300 meters level altitude and meeting the Sherpa people because they have their, their ethnic groups, so they have their own language, which is still hard for me to understand, but uh, but it was very nice in terms of how like opening and welcoming they were to me. And regarding the field works, it was, um, yeah, we had, I had to do um, along with like, set up the camera traps, where would be the great spot for like, looking at the perk marks and any, the scrape signs or uh, footprints or, or or anything we get like would have probable chances of having that uh, animal moment there and also because we were not doing it by ourselves we were also integrating Serpa people because that's the most important thing on sustainability how we would want a project to continue for a long term because if we separate the local people there we wouldn't be making it possible like we need to tell them what we're doing and the best way would we involve them in the project so they have been there since the very beginning they have been interviewed about the human wildlife conflict because we're looking for the probable a uh, tiger population there though we've not got the pictures but talking to those uh, herders women who live there with their animals all year round and they have these experiences and uh, of sharing of like seeing so ch having such encounters with tigers or leopards and uh, it had been pretty amazing with terms of like how people were so aware of what's happening and and we would expect that they wouldn't know what it is they would maybe like um, make up something but we have we also used photo plates to compare like what they actually see and their sight wouldn't be like wrong or something because they are so vigilant on things because they have to be in that risky environment and look for their cattle and be aware about the wild attacks because there would be bears and leopards and tigers or whatever so uh, they have like be very open and clear about what they see and how was the experience for them it was pretty cool. I didn't feel anything funny. Um, it was a little bit hard sometimes. I'd be like, oh, it's so hard. It's just men around. The snowfall for the first time, camping experience for the first time in my life. Oh my God, I had to walk those uphills and down, look for those park marks and no water, no like proper restrooms and stuff. And I had to use those natural snow for relieving myself and cleaning myself oh my god I was uh at one time I was like what what am I doing here like I would I could be in my home enjoying my bed eating chocolates or good things made by my mom but then those things I mean the, the that feeling of hardships when I get back and when I tell to people that happiness in me like when I share the stories oh my god that's so amazing like i smile and laugh my eyes shine when i tell those stories to my friends and they're like that doesn't sound as fun as you're saying it to me like well yeah it was but it's still fun it's so much fun when you remember it back so i like no matter how hard it would i would again do it again and again so yeah that has been amazing